In this challenge, your job is to convert a stateful function component to a stateful class component. By the end, everything should work exactly the way that it does now, but the syntax should be using classes instead. Now, I'm not just throwing you to the wind here. I did give you a little bit of a step-by-step -step breakdown, but it will require you to remember some of the things we've been learning about in the last few lessons. So make sure to use my four-step guide here to help you while you work on this challenge. Pause the screencast now and convert our function component to a class component. Okay, well let's start by changing our function into a class. We'll replace our function keyword with class. So we have class app, we'll get rid of these parentheses, which sometimes I forget to remove and it creates a pretty difficult bug to fix. So I've learned through painful experience to always remember to remove those. I'll deal with state and some of this other stuff later, but first I'm going to create a render method, which is where my return value needs to live inside. Okay, now let's declare some state. Instead of what we're doing with the use state here, we're going to just declare state as an object. Remember, it always needs to be an object, and the only value we are holding on to right now is count, so we will have a count property and initialize that with the value of zero. Next, we get to our methods. Well, we can remove the function keyword, and because these will be using the this.setState method, I'll need to make sure to make these into an arrow function. And I'll do the same thing for subtract. We'll turn that into an arrow function as well. Now, since we are no longer getting our state setter function with react.useState, instead of having very specific ones like set count, I'm going to have this dot set state, which is a method that comes from, oh, I forgot to extends react.component. Sorry for anyone that was screaming at me for that. This.setState is a method that comes from react.component, and by extending react.component, we get access to that method. I'll change this one as well, this.setState. Now, previously, we were just saving the bare value zero, or this number, in state, but now we have state as an object with a count property. I usually prefer, instead of saying previous count, because that makes it sound like this is the number value from before, I usually prefer to actually say prev state. So I'll select both of these and we'll call this prev state. And I do need this to be a callback function because I care what the previous state was in order to determine the new state, since I'm adding one or subtracting one on top of the old state. But I can't just change prev count here to prev state, nor can I say prev state dot count because I'm no longer returning an object from my this.set state callback function. This might be really tempting to do, but don't forget that state is now an object, so I can't just return a number, which is what this would be if I did it this way. Now I could open this up and say return an object that has a count property. This object, by the way, is our state object, and this count property is, well, the count property. So then I would say prev state dot count plus one. This might be a good time to remind you that we never want to modify state directly. So it wouldn't make sense for me to say something like plus plus because this would be modifying the previous state object, which we still have access to while this code is running. Instead, I need to make sure that I'm just adding one to it and allowing React to receive this new object and replace the old version of state with this new version of state. Now, obviously, this is a lot more complicated than this one-liner that we had here, but if we want, I can use the implicit return that we get with arrow functions. However, it gets a little bit strange because I'm returning an object, and I can't just say prev state arrow and then put my properties here, which is what I'm oftentimes tempted to do. So that seems like it might look like this. The reason I can't do this is because this curly brace does not tell JavaScript that this is an object that I'm trying to return, but instead it's telling JavaScript that this is the opening of the body of this function, and therefore it won't be using the implicit return after the arrow. Fortunately, I can fix this really easily by just surrounding my object here with parentheses. That way the parentheses will essentially trigger the implicit return, and what I am returning is the object. Since that was a lot of curly braces and parentheses, I'm going to just copy this whole line and replace it over here, but change this from plus to minus. And okay, that was a lot to go through, but we still have to change our methods here. Because we're inside of a class component, I need to say this.subtract and this.add, as well as changing count to this.state. 
dot count. Let's clean up this comment up here, cross our fingers, I'll hit save, and we'll see if this is working the way that it was before. Awesome, just like we expect. Now, up until now, the way that we've been learning to add state and state setter methods inside of a class component, in reality, is using some updated syntax for JavaScript classes, namely the ability to add class fields the way that we're doing here, where we just are declaring state, and that will automatically get added to every object that's created from this class and the ability to have our class methods be arrow functions. As far as I know, these two features were not originally included in the spec for classes in ES6, which means that when class components in React were first introduced, this syntax was not actually used. So I do want to spend just a little bit of time learning a different syntax for declaring state and adding these state setter methods to a class component. And that's what we'll be covering next.